Well, how did you do? At this point, you should probably be out of inventory, or close to out of inventory. That's perfectly acceptable. We expect that, actually. Hopefully you're doing this at a profit, and we'll check your profit in just a little bit here. So let's take a look at the video from ERP Sim, end of round one and into round two. The simulator itself is implemented with standard internet web technologies. There is a public viewer that can be accessed that has useful information about news reports that may or may not affect your business. It also shows the current simulation date. This viewer console is accessed with the same login account details as SAP. Okay, so this information is uh, it's available, it's uh, posted for you, and let me make sure I can get the right one here. That one? Yes. All right, so because I have it running in another window, I have to go incognito so it doesn't know it's me. So the, the link for this is provided for you within the, the list of other information for this topic. So I have it posted there. So what you're going to do, it's the same login information as SAP. So uh, for the example that I'm using, it's GM3. So I'm going into GM3, whatever yours is, make sure you use it. My client is 301, again, use yours. And my login is Z1, whatever yours is, make sure you use it. And once you log in, it's going to show you the viewer. So as you were getting through round two, you were probably wondering which day it was. This is going to be your way of keeping track of which day within the simulation it is. So viewer for round one, here we go. And let's see if we can get back to the video and explain it a little bit. At the end of each simulation round, this viewer page is updated with financial and operational results of all the teams in that simulation. With this information, you can gauge how well you're doing in relation to the competition. In the SAP system, we have much more detailed information about our own company. You don't have to wait for the end of the round to run it. One of the key advantages of ERP systems such as SAP is that information is always live and up to date. All right, so before we do any more within SAP, let's talk about what's in this viewer. So not only is it going to tell you that we are now round one and at the end of round one, once the simulation starts up, it will go to round two, day one, round two, day two, three, all the way through. Uh, what you'll want to know at this point is the results, and it's, it's just me here, so I have one team that's doing nothing and one team that I actually made changes to. If you're paying attention, I'm making changes to Z. I did nothing with Y, and my net income is actually higher with the do-nothing team, <laughs> yet my sales are higher for Team Z. This is going to be where you take a look at how you're performing, Again, it is not about total sales. Your rank comes from your cumulative net income. So you want the highest net income. And my team that did absolutely nothing, I took the default values, I did zero marketing, has a higher net income. So here I actually use 0.8% of my revenue for marketing, and that may be the difference. I also lowered my price a little bit. So it might be that one euro per product plus the additional marketing expense that brought my net income down. It's still close, so we'll see how I do against the Do Nothing team from here on. But this is, again, there is a link connected with this section. Make sure that you follow it, you log on. It is literally your SAP information, the same server, the same client, your same user ID, and your SAP password, whatever you changed it to. In the future when we're using these, make sure that you log on to SAP first and change the temporary password. Otherwise, once you change the temporary password, it's not going to work. So if you just use that temporary one, uh, whatever the initial password is, and you log on to this viewer, once you change it, it's not going to like that you did that. So make sure you log on to SAP first. So that is the viewer, and again, you should have the link at this point as well. Uh, take a look at the next part at of the video. At any point during the simulation, you can get a snapshot of your finances. Let's return to SAP and look at this report, as well as revisit the ones we already know about to see what story they tell us. Run the financial statement report. Its technical name is F.01. This report has one of the most detailed selection screens, 
Fortunately, we're not interested in most of these, only three of them. You must enter your company code, which is simply your team letter repeated twice. You must select SIM1 as the financial statement version. And that should be the default. To control the output format of the report, you can choose from the set of list output options. Select the ALV tree control option and then execute the report. At some point, you will encounter a system warning or request for confirmation, as we see here. To continue, click on the confirm icon. This standard SAP report provides you with the balance sheet and the income statement of your company. If you have selected the ALV tree control display, you can see more details on each section of this report by expanding the folder. You can find your current bank account cash balance in the current assets section of the balance sheet. At the end of the report is the item you should be most interested in, your net income. This is your profit and the ultimate measure of whether or not you are managing your company well. The net income line corresponds to the cumulative profit or loss of your company since the beginning of the simulation. Starting from the second round, the report will show the financial results as they were at the end of the previous round. The different columns show changes for the current round, allowing you to get an idea of your current performance against previous rounds. Use the sales summary report to analyze your sales performance over the previous round. On which day did you make your last sale of each of your six products? Did that correspond to your recollection of when you ran out of inventory of these products? In addition to this summary sales report, there are also two other sales reports. The sales order report offers more detailed information about each sales order. Where the product was sold, meaning distribution channel and area, which product was sold, to whom it was sold or the sold to party, the number of units sold, the sales revenue value, and the price at which the sale was made. You can also see information about when the customer will pay the invoice. In the distribution sim, all customers pay their invoice exactly 10 days after delivering. The price market report is the only place other than the simulation viewer where you can get information about your competition. Think of it as an industry report published for everyone. It is only published once every five simulated days, with a summary of sales activity for the industry as a whole over the previous five days. This will permit you to benchmark your decisions against the rest of the market as you will be able to see for each product the average sales price of orders placed, total units sold, and revenue value in each distribution channel. By this point, you are probably going to go ahead and pause her and jump into SAP. So uh, the reason for that is I want to discuss the financial statement, forward slash n, f.01. I had an extra slash at the end. F.01. So again, it is the company code. So I'm in ZZ. The default is SIM1. You don't have to worry about that. The ALV tree control. You click execute. It is going to give you this. She says, sometimes you might. It definitely will every single time. <laughs> so this gives you everything. Again, your net income ends up being on this line. And if we look at this compared to the... This one? Nope. I have too many open here, don't I? Not that one either. Come on. Nope, not that one. Come on, Kim. There we go. I can actually close that. Uh, so if we look at the results here, we'll see 14,005. 14,005. So again, this is at the end of the round. We get the, cum the, the net income, the cumulative net income. We also have our round net income because we've only done one round. There is only one round showing here. The round net income is the same as cumulative. So 14,005. We also have 111,548 for our revenue. So again, you can watch this information in real time. One thing that uh, I've noticed is for some reason the job aid doesn't mention this ALV tree control, and I'm not quite sure why. So if you go in and you see this, it gives the same information, but I don't think it's uh, as easy to read, maybe? I don't know. That's personal preference, I guess. It has the information, though, so all the information that you were looking for. So, again, 14,000 of the revenue, all of that is in there. But that ALV tree control, I, I prefer that. So that's one piece, and then we'll go into the next part here of...
the replenishment Probably out of stock of most, if not all, of your products. We need to learn to replenish inventory. Before we see the transaction for this, we need to learn about our current resupply strategy and the delivery lead time of our supplier. We need to complete the procurement process based on our replenishment strategy. Our supplier takes up to three days to ship us what we have ordered. We can use the ERP system to calculate how much of each product is needed based on the existing replenishment and inventory levels. Procurement is a two-step process. First, you must generate the procurement plan. Once satisfied with the plan, you need to create purchase orders to be sent to your supplier to actually place the order. In round two, you will decide how often you send replenishment orders to your supplier, each time restocking the inventory levels you started with. You will continue to adjust your sales price and marketing spending as you did in round one. Look at your job aid. The procurement transactions can all be found in the center in the area marked procurement process. Let's turn to the SAP system to learn how to run the relevant reports and operational transactions. The MRP calculation process uses the independent requirements or replenishment level and the current stock levels to calculate how much of each product needs <coughs> to be ordered from your supplier. If, for example, your replenishment level is set at 1,000 boxes of 1 liter clear pure and there are 400 boxes in stock, the MRP will generate a requisition to purchase 600 boxes of 1 liter clear pure. Run the MRP transaction. Its technical name is MD01. The behavior of the MRP can be controlled with a variety of parameters. For our purposes, we must set these to those that we need. Right, and I'm going to go through this again. So at this point, I'm going to say, just listen to what she's saying. She's going to go through all these different options within MRP. She's going to explain each one of these. The default values are going to work. Do not change them. So just let her go through the process, and then I'll actually walk through it. So don't feel like you need to keep track of what she's doing or try it out right now. Let me walk you through it after she gets done. Set the parameters as follows. Plant, your plant. The processing key, N-E-U-P-L. Create purchase requisition, one. Schedule lines, three. Create MRP list, one. Planning mode, three. Display material list, Check the box if it's not already checked. Once you've filled in all these details, you will need to click on Enter to begin the MRP process. A warning notice is displayed at the bottom of the page, advising you to check your parameters before confirming. Click on Enter again to proceed. Confirm that you want to start the planning run. After SAP completes the planning process, you will see information on what planning items have been created. The MRP process creates requisitions which are internal documents. To place orders with your vendor, you need to create and send them purchase orders. SAP provides a simple way to accept all purchase requisitions and aggregate them to create new purchase orders. The transaction ME59N automatically creates consolidated purchase orders for each vendor. The default selection parameters for this report are all that are needed. Simply click on the Execute icon to have SAP perform the conversion process. You will see a summary of the purchase orders created. At some point during the simulation, you are bound to see a No Suitable Requisition Found at the bottom level of your screen. The system is telling you that there were no new requisitions that needed to be processed. To see this message, execute the procedure again. Since you just created all the purchase orders you needed and have not rerun the MRP, there are no new requisitions that must be processed. If you encounter this message, either you have already run the process, forgotten to run the MRP, or the MRP has not generated any requisitions. This might be the case if you have sufficient inventory and purchase orders in the system already when you ran the MRP. Retrace your steps and ensure you have run all the transactions properly and in the correct sequence. There is a purchase order tracking report that we can use to see what purchase orders we have in the system and track their status. The purchase order tracking report shows the list of all the purchase orders in the system. It shows the quantity of each material ordered and the price you pay. The last columns are the most useful. The delivery or completion status informs you if the materials have been delivered to your warehouse or not. 
The goods column informs you on which simulation day the goods were delivered or will be delivered. The payment column informs you when you must pay for them. All right. So I'm, I'm going to run through that whole replenishment process again. So they don't need that anymore. So at this point, just so you know, again, you need to replenish. You need something. You might not be sold out of everything, but you at least need to get something in. The initial forecast for each one of these is 1,000. It takes up to three days. This is listed on the job aid. It's one to three days to receive your product. So we're jumping into this section of the job aid here, right in the center. So it's this section and, oh, uh, well, part of that too. <laughs> so it's the procurement process. Uh, it's really what we're doing is we're doing a little bit of the planning process and jumping into the procurement process. So opening up the round two and three, we actually see all the transactions here, but don't use MD61. We haven't talked about that one yet. So the first part is execute MRP, and I will split screen this one again. Execute MRP. So looking in rounds two and three, it's MD01, MD01. This is the easiest transaction to run. It pops up. All of the default parameters are correct. See, it's not telling you anymore to make any of those changes. But look at it. Enter, enter, enter. So as long as you have your plant in here, everything else is fine. So it's enter, and it pops up at the bottom here. Please check input parameters. That's fine. So we click enter, and it says to start the planning run, press enter. <laughs> and you press enter again, and as long as you get this, that means it has run. Now you might be wondering, why is it enter, enter, enter? If you think about a big company that is ordering materials, so we have six products that we're ordering here. Six products, we're literally just ordering various quantities of those six. Whatever, to reach our, our forecast of 1,000, if we had zero, we order 1,000. If we have 200, we order 800. That's all we're doing. MRP is, is really overkill for this. But if you think about a company like Harley-Davidson, Rockwell Automation, some of the big companies out there that have thousands of products and each product has thousands and thousands of parts, various vendors. MRP is the kind of thing that whoever it is that runs MRP generally starts it before they go home for the night and they hope it's ready the next day. So they don't want you to accidentally run MRP at these big companies. <laughs> uh, for one thing, you, unless you're the MRP person, wouldn't be. But uh, that person themselves, they don't want it to be an accident. There's so many different parameters within here, and we're not going to talk. That's, not, that's outside of the scope of this course, but there are a lot of different parameters within MRP. If anything's off, MRP can run even longer. It doesn't run the way you want it to, et cetera, et cetera. So that's why MRP is like that. But again, it is literally just enter, 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 done. So you will reach a point within this class that MRP is super fast. The next item here, so MRP it does nothing but plan. It's material requirements planning. That's what the P stands for. You run MRP all day, nothing happens. In this simulation, when you're running MRP, literally all you're doing is putting together purchase requisitions, planned purchase orders. Once you have purchase requisitions, you have to convert those into purchase orders to actually make them happen. So the way MRP works, every single raw material has its own purchase requisition, its own planned purchase order. So what you want to do is convert those purchase requisitions to purchase orders. Within ERP SIM, there's, many, there's a few different ways of doing this. Within ERP SIM, we're going to do a nice, easy way. It's ME59N. So here, here. Oh, okay. <laughs> this is actually showing within the stock requirements list what it looks like. So it means that there's purchase requisitions for each one. So if we were to look in the stock requirements list, we're not going to, we would see that there are 1,000 to be ordered for B01. All right, so ME59N, automatic generation of purchase orders. So when we do this, so the default parameters are, are going to be all we need. So again, all we do, ME59N, and click on execute, not enter, execute. And what it's showing here is six separate purchase requisitions 
have been converted into one purchase order from Bubble Co. Bottling Company. So that's what it does. It's a nice easy way. You'll find it, it, when we go through all the different ERP SIM games, you'll see that it will consolidate purchase requisitions into one or two purchase orders, depending on the vendor and depending on the needs. That's it. And as they mentioned within the video, we'll undoubtedly see no suitable purchase requisitions found. So that means that there are no purchase requisitions available. So what I will do is I'll run MRP again. Press enter a few times. Everything looks normal here, right? Looks like it worked. <clears throat> and then hop over to purchase requisitions and I run it. No suitable purchase requisitions found. The reason for that is that MRP is looking, it's planning. MRP is just planning. It's looking at your plan and it says, you said you want 1,000? Well, I'm showing right now an active purchase order ordering 1,000. You don't need any more. So unless you change your replenishment level or unless those oh, purchase orders have come in, they've been delivered and sold, it's not going to order anything else. If that doesn't make sense, just realize that's what's going on and you will learn it by the end of this class. I guarantee it. <laughs> we'll spend a lot of time on MRP and what MRP does uh, within the production process in the extended manufacturing game. At this point, just realize MD01. So running MRP, MD01, enter, enter, enter. And then you switch over to ME59N, execute. And as long as you've seen this kind of a result here, you know it worked. And the next step is ZME2N. That is actually considered a report. ZME2N, purchase order tracking. So what you'll see here, this first part here, this is actually when ERP SIM is initially activated. It will uh, order the initial inventory. Now that's in this, the distribution game. You will not see that ever again. There will never be an initial order beyond the distribution game. But with this, it's when I ran through an, an, an initialized ERP SIM, it automatically ordered 1,000 of each for you. This, however, was what I just ordered. So you can see, and actually I'll pull this up here. EMB52, the inventory. So if I look here, 1,000, 1,000, 1,000, 1,000, I am literally out. 1,000 of each one of these, so it is ordering literally 1,000 to reach my replenishment level of 1,000. It says that I have 365 in stock. It is literally ordering the difference between 1,000 and 365. It is ordering 635 of the spritz. So that's how MRP works. It looks at the rep replenishment level, which is 1,000, and it's only ordering the difference. So that's why when I run MRP again, it's saying, you don't need anything else. I can tell right here there's a purchase order. Exactly what you need is on order. Now this is saying unconfirmed, not scheduled. That is to be expected because the simulation is not running. Once the simulation is running, it will pop up and it will actually give you uh, a date, an estimated date for when it's going to be coming in. So that is round two. So start working on your replenishment. Do you realize you've run MRP at this point, but you can run... In the distribution game, you can run MRP every single simulated day if you want. That's probably going to take up the entire day doing it. <laughs> and you do still have to keep track of everything else. You still have to maintain prices, do your marketing, watch your sales reports, and watch your financial statements. So there's a lot going on within round two. So uh, we're building up. There's going to be another step within round three. So uh, we'll get started within round two if you are on one of the chat windows. As soon as you are ready to go into round two, you let me know and we'll get started.